Welcome to NHL Draft Pros. All right, so in this episode, we're going to talk with Hattie from Dauber Prospects, and we are going to discuss his top 10 currently, so kind of like a mid-season rankings, I guess you could say, and some of the changes, who's gone up, who's gone down, compared to the preseason ones that we had, and there's an episode on, on our homepage there if you want to check that out, so uh, welcome again. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, I want to preface this by saying, uh, before we get into the top 10, Cole Eichemann's not in it. Oh so boy, I'm okay, so you're, you're starting off with a bang, you're, you know what? Yep. Without further ado, let's start with your your top, your number one overall pick here. Absolutely. So there's no doubt here. Maxwell Celebrini's a first overall, and nothing's changed since the start of the year. Uh, he's probably on par with Jack Hughes in terms of rush creation. Um, the approach he has to the game, the way that he p- paces himself in transition is fantastic. He's constantly attacking players head on. He's, you know, just ankle breaking players in transition in the NCAA. And it's fantastic. I mean, you watch him in every shift, you feel like he's going to create something. But on top of that rush creation, he's added a whole new kind of cycle dimension to his game. He's able to retrieve pucks to play them quickly. He's one of the the fastest thinkers in this draft. And on top of it, um, He's a player who competes extremely hard. Even though the defensive engagement isn't all there, you can see that he's constantly thinking ahead and trying to, to do his best to, to make the best effort in order to retrieve pucks and, and play them up to his defensemen or that kind of stuff. So, yeah, this is a player whose compete level is off the charts. And on top of that, have some of the best skill in the draft. He's a fantastic shooter. He's a great passer. He's an amazing stick handler. Um, and the physical game has come such a long way. He's working the boards really well. I mean, there, every single, I, I can't really name you a weakness in this game. Um, and that's what makes him so interesting is on top of being so well-rounded, he has a couple of standout skills um, that make him really a plug and play player. You're going to, you're going to see him in the NHL very, very quickly. I have Celebrini at number one as well. So Hattie, that's a pretty, I think, standard one across the board right now for most draft rankings. So now moving on, who do you got number two? Because this is where it kind of gets interesting. I think from like nine to eight to ten is is pretty much a, a mix up depending on who you're talking to. Yeah, absolutely. My my range is from two to nine, and you can put them in any order, and, and I'm fine. But I do have a slight preference. Uh, Ivan Demidov is my second overall pick, and uh, as I mentioned in our last video, I mean he's he's fantastic stick handling wise. He's got a good base of defensive tools as well, and um, I really like his back leg wrister as well. He's able to shoot in in, in motion fairly well, um, and he doesn't need a lot of space to make plays, and he can wriggle out of the weirdest scenarios with the, with the fanciest deeks you'll ever see. Um, he's a mesmerizing player, and I think the main concern is you know you need to get him at the pro level as much as soon as possible so he can learn to 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 deek against pros because mhl defense is is i mean it's among the worst i've seen among the the, the high-end uh junior league so it's like you know you, you want to see him kind of pick up some tools that work a bit better against pro levels um hopefully we see that soon but for the moment i think the skill level and base of defensive tools is more than enough to make the meet off my second overall pick and like you said yeah he's a sicko with the puck on his stick and he definitely we'd like to see him against a little bit high, higher caliber opposition but you know, mhl too easy for him at this point. KHL would be nice, but unfortunately, we're not going to have that luxury. So we got to go based on what we're seeing right now. And I like Demidov a lot as well. So he's at number two for Hattie. Who do you got at number three? Number three is uh, my first defenseman off the board, and it's uh, it's a doozy. It's Zane Parekh, um, right-handed defenseman out of Saginaw. He has more he has more goals than Easton Cowan this season, uh, and he's a draft eligible defenseman. It makes no sense. Wow. He's just he's amazing. Um, the 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 poise with the puck, I think, is is both a high end strength and a bit of a weakness at the same time because sometimes he doesn't realize he just needs to throw the puck out as soon as possible. But overall, I, I just think, you know, a, a player with this level of poise, the fluid skating that he has, and um, the high-end puck skills that he has as well. I mean, you, you don't score 27 goals in, in your in your draft-eligible OHL season without having a booming shot. But on top of that, um, the playmaking game is fantastic. He, he can kind of read plays in advance um I, I think he's the smartest defenseman in this draft um overall just the ability to kind of predict what his teammates routes are going to be what his opponents are going to do um and just this kind of kind of multi-layered thinking of the game um on top of that he moves off the puck uh in the offensive zone really well he's comfortable activating um moving at the blue line kind of shifting his angle for a shot um yeah he's just a fantastic creator in the uh in the ohl this year and yeah, there's a reason he's, I think he's top five in OHL scoring right now or something like that. I, I think it was, at last count, it was seven, 79 points in like 50 games. It's it's absurd production. And the, the production is a symptom of what he does so well. Whereas with other players, sometimes they're racking up all these numbers and, you know, you look at their game more in detail and you start to see a lot of warts. Um, 
I think Zane Parekh's defensive issues have been overblown. I think he's a, a, a decent defensive player. He's certainly improved over the last year. So, yeah, I mean, there, there's room for growth for sure, but I don't think, you know, I've seen outlets call his defending abysmal. I wouldn't go that far. Yeah, you know what? So I, I've been fortunate enough to see Zane Parek play for two years now. One of my good buddies, his kid plays on Saginaw, so I go to a lot of those games. Yeah. Uh, his name is Sebastian Jervais. I give a little plug out to him. And uh, yeah, so I, I've seen him since day one. He's definitely, definitely improved his passing game this year. Last year it was more, you know, run and gun shoot kind of defenseman. Yeah. But this year, I think he's got twice as many uh, assists this year than he does a goal. So uh, he's definitely layered his game and putting up major points, like you said, for not only an OHL defenseman, but a draft eligible defenseman. This is very impressive what he's doing. And he is going to go high in this draft for sure. Yeah. All right. So then now we have number four. Yeah, so number four and number five, I've been racking my head on both of these players um, and in which order I would take them because they're so fundamentally different, but they're both so skilled. Number four for me for the moment is Caden Lindstrom uh, out of Medicine Hat in WHL. Uh, he's a massive player. Uh, he, he's, I think, 6'4", 200 pounds, something like that. Um, and the way he plays is so refined for a player's size. Usually a player this big and this skilled doesn't really need to develop these kind of high-end tools um, in, in terms of habits and all that stuff because they can just outwork and outskill and outmuscle opponents fairly easily. But Lindstrom has so many interesting, intricate details in his game. The the lane switches and transition, the way that he draws players in to open up passing lanes, there are so many little habits in his, in his game that really make him a, an interesting player. But Overall, I think what really makes Lindstrom so interesting is actually the way that just pucks pucks just stick to his stick. I mean, you know, he'll he'll jump the zone and he'll get a pass from his defenseman off the boards with his back to it, and he'll just he'll just put a stick out and the puck will stick to it. He's just got this magnetic ability um, that makes him really really interesting. He's got the power game. He's got the 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 speed and in, in in short strides and yeah, there's just so much to like about his game and. I think, you know, if you're looking for comparables, I think Quentin Byfield would be a very interesting one. Uh, Byfield's project, Byfield's progression, uh, I think, will look a lot like Caden Lindstrom's. Lindstrom's probably going to take a couple years in order to kind of round out his game and add even more kind of projectable tools, a board game, the you know, the defensive positioning, all that. But um, by the end of it, I think Caden Lindstrom, even though he might take a bit more time to break out, by year four or year five, we might be looking at one of the best players from this draft. You know, I like that comparison too. And Byfield had one of the nicest goals, probably a goal of the year so far uh, recently. So if you haven't seen Quentin Byfield's latest highlight reel goal, you need to go check that out. Um, but then at five, I have another WHLer in Berkeley Catton. And this is what makes it so tough. Uh, oh, at yeah. Four and at five for me is because <laughs> they're so fundamentally different, but they're so equally projectable and good, uh, but in different ways. Catton is dynamic to all ends. I mean, this is a player who creates and transition in fantastic ways he um he attacks players head on and you know some of the stick handling skill really reminds me of Ivan Demidov but um I say Katten is a bit more um kind of he's a bit more simplistic in the way that he takes whereas Demidov just pulls out something in that you you would have never expected any player to think of um but overall Katten I think the, the puck skills really make his game He's a great stick handler. He's a really good passer. I really like his in-stride uh, snapshot. It's something that really makes his game tick. And yeah, overall, he's just been fantastic for Spokane this year. And I, I struggle to see much of an issue with his offensive game, but the defensive game is certainly not a strength. I wouldn't call it like a bona fide element of his game, but he's still, still able to get in spots and make defensive plays. It's just, it, I don't think it's an area of his game you'll ever get to kind of a, a top end level at the NHL. I think he's going to be a, an average or below average NHL defend defensive player, but the level of skill that he brings to the game more than compensates for it. Yeah, you know what? I've been a big fan of Catton for a long time, and in this kind of draft where where you have, like you said, from two to eight to nine to ten, I mean, you can you know mix them up a little bit like that, and I think it it might be personal preference sometimes or projectability depending on how yeah. you're looking at it. But Catton definitely is a fun player to watch. And doing really good things in Spokane, like you said. Absolutely. So, all right, what do you got at six there, Hattie? Okay, so here I have a trio of players, and this is another trio of defensemen that I've been racking my head on, just trying to figure out in which order I like them. And you can put them in any order, and I'd be fine with it. But at six, I have Zeev Boyum. Um, he's playing in Denver right now. Um, he's about an average size defenseman, but what's really impressive with Boyum is he's not only an amazing offensive player, where he's making these you know elite level passes and and 
doing really projectable things in the offensive zone, but he uses his defensive skating extremely well as well. I, I think he's a I think he's a really well rounded uh, player in terms of both being offensively creative and defensively competent. Um, and you know, there's a reason he made the roster for the NTDP um, for, for the for the NTDP at the World Juniors. Um, this is a player who is already well advanced for his years. He thinks the game really, really well. And, you know, even though the skating, I mean, he's already so good at, at finding space laterally in the offensive zone at the blue line. I mean, he's, he's able to shimmy through checks really well. And that's despite the fact that his edge work isn't really all the best right now. Like it can improve beyond what it already is. And I think that's the separating factor for me between him and the, the two defensemen behind him is Williams, the things William is good at, um, he he has he still has room room to improve. So I think he could become one of the most um, elusive defensemen from the blue line in the NHL. I think there's a there's upside for that. I'd put his upside at maybe 60, 65 points if everything works out. Like he's got that offensive upside, but on top of that, he's amazing defensively. If you if you zero in on him and focus on what he does in the defensive zone, um, the way he closes gaps, the angles he takes for to to, to kind of check players, it, it's all so advanced. Right on. Okay, so who's uh, who's the next uh, of the next two D coming up? Uh, yeah. So the seventh uh, pick in my rankings is Archelm Leshunov, um, out of Michigan State. Um, he was eleventh overall in my last rankings, but um, in recent games he's gotten a lot more mature, a lot more composed. And my main qualm with this game was that even though the the tools are so impressive, I mean, he's a fantastic fluid skater. He's huge. He's he's got a great reach. Um, I think the main issue with Leshunov early in the season is this is a player who tended i mean he makes a lot of mistakes um from that blue line in michigan state or at least he did at the start of the year i think he's gotten a lot better at reading the game at predicting what's going to happen and um kind of sitting back when he needs to and not you know being aggressive on every single uh puck play so that's been the main change for me with Levshinov, but it's really impressive because you know he's an amazing player on the puck um he's an extremely fluid skater with the puck or without um, there's a lot of tools to work here, and I'd be surprised if he if he you know drops to seven. I'm pretty sure at, on draft day he'll be in the top four. Um, but overall, I mean, there's just so much to like about his game. I just you know I still want to see some progress in terms of the decision making, in terms of the awareness. But a thing to keep in mind is this is a player who a year and a half ago was playing U18 in Belarus. Like that's not a level that necessarily makes you think at a high level. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think there's room for growth and he's already shown a lot of progress and everything I've heard about him, you know, off the ice, this is a player who works really hard, who um, is constantly kind of staying an hour or two after practice to work on his skills. Like he's a player who who's trying really, really hard. And I think that'll separate him from the pack on uh, come draft day. Awesome. I like that. And then uh, who's the next D now? I'm interested to see who you got at number eight. Yeah. So number eight is Sam Dickinson out of the London Knights. Um, just the, I think he's the best defensive player in the draft overall. Just the, the defensive tools he has are fantastic. I mean, he's a really, really great skater, not just for a big guy at 6'3", 200 pounds, but just in general, he's a great skater. Um, he closes gaps really effectively. He's got fantastic stick work. He's physical. Um, you don't want to come up against him when you're when you're going down the boards off the rush. You, you don't. It's just it's it's a problem for you. Uh, but yeah, overall, uh, Sam Dickinson reminds me of of Caden Gooley in a lot of ways. Um, a really good skater for a, a really big, really good skater uh, with fantastic defensive work and um, a player who can jump start rushes, activate into the offensive zone. I, I wouldn't call his offensive game a plus. Like I'd be surprised if he hits 40 points in the NHL. Um, but the the defensive upside with him is sky high. I think he's got a floor as a as a second pair defenseman, and he can make a he can make a really good number two, number three defenseman. Yeah, I, I like Dickinson's game a lot. And I think that uh, he's gonna be, he's gonna go high as well in this draft. So I like Dickinson. I well, like you said, the the last three D that you talked about, you know, they're gonna go high basically. All right. So then uh, number nine, are we sticking with D or do you got uh, forward now? I've got two forwards to close off the top ten. So number nine is Consta Hellenius uh, out of Finland. He plays in Ukraine, uh in Liga right now. The production is off the charts with him this year in in Liga, but Liga is another league that's you know, dropped in terms of quality in recent years. And he's gotten opportunities in the top six this year in, in a pro level. And yeah, I mean, he's producing a lot, but I think the the main thing that makes his game tick is his brain. I think he's one of, one of the smartest, if not the smartest player in this draft. Um, the way he thinks the game, the way he reads plays, um, you know, our Finnish scout at Dauber Prospects, you know, it, it, she, she compares him a lot to uh, Sebastian Ajo. That's the main name that comes out when we think of Kansa Helenius. And Wow. 
uh, I would say that Sebastian Alho definitely has more puck skill than Hellenius, but they approach the game mentally the same way. Um, they, they read their opponent's routes, they cue their opponents with kind of nonverbal cues to kind of throw pucks into areas and let them know, like, hey, this is where I want you. Um, they, dictate play, they, uh, they dictate play off the puck really, really well. I mean, with Hellenius, you're looking at a player who the puck skills aren't there. I think his puck skills across the board are average. Um, with his passing being maybe slightly above average, but the brain is just you can't you can't ignore that. It's, he thinks the game so extremely well, and that even shows up in the defensive zone. He's a real three zone player as well. So, I, I think teams are going to like that profile. Um, but I think where I have him is more or less where he's going to get drafted. You know, between eight and twelve is where I predict him to go on drafting. Perfect. I like it. So, who is your last pick for the top ten right now? Um, my last pick of the top 10 is Liam Greentree out of Windsor in the OHL. He is sneaky good. People don't realize it. I, you have him pretty high, not like the rest of us, but I like Greentree a lot, and I'm glad yeah. he, you're giving him props. Fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the thing is, at the start of the year, I saw Greentree as more of a kind of linear shooter, you know, a player who mo- mainly creates offense through his goal scoring ability and he's got a fantastic shot it's a it's a heavy release he's got a good wrister a good snapper a good one-timer he's got a good arsenal of shots as well but as the year's gone on and i've watched more and more of green tree you notice the the hockey sense is off the charts as well um he draws players in he creates passing opportunities for his teammates um he's able to kind of read plays in advance place himself proactively and kind of find these little pockets of space to work with on top of that he's really good defensively and um, he 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 just you know his playmaking game has grown so much. He's playing give and goes. He's playing towards the middle. Um, he's finding players cross ice. And on top of that, like the details in his game are so mature. Um, he's a player who constantly finds inside lanes, who um, spaces himself really well in the offensive zone to find these little pockets. There's a lot of little details in this game I really like. So. Overall, I think the, the profile is a kind of power forward winger who can surprise you with his level of intelligence is something that I really like. And with Green Tree, I, I think that overall, you know, I, I used to see him as more of a middle six upside type of guy, but recent viewings have been so good that, you know, I think there's a decent chance of him making a top line eventually. Maybe as a real complimentary player, as a kind of third wheel on that on that on that top line, but you know, I think the floor with him is is a second line player. There's a, there's so much to love in this game, so many different facets, and we see influences a game that you can't help but love him. So now we're gonna talk about you. You drop Cole Eisman out of the top ten and give us the reasoning behind that, Hattie. I'm interested to hear what you have to say. Yeah, you know, like I said, I saw a video. He he specked everything into his his goal scoring game. Um, but you know, you know, I, I do this. You know, I'm doing this with a grain of salt. I mean, he's he's on the same tier as Hellenius and Green Tree for me, so he could go as high as nine, and you know, I, I'd be personally fine with it. I just think that with Iserman, you're really banking on his goal scoring ability translating. But overall, it's just about who's going to be the most impactful, right? You know, I, I don't see Iserman as a net positive defensive player. He's not a good playmaker. He's not the best skater either. Um, and even though he's built like a tree stump, he's six foot, 200 pounds. He doesn't use that all that well. Um, so it's it's just, it's it's a strange one with Eisenman because, you know, at the same time, I, I look at similar players from the NTDP that had this kind of profile, Arthur Kaliev, Oliver Wallstrom, you know, these types of guys. They find, they found relative success, but they're still not the most impactful players. Um, I think Eisenman might fall into that boat, and I don't think it's enough in order to make him uh, a bona fide top three player like he is on some rankings. Yeah, so that, you know what, Hattie, always, always a pleasure talking hockey with you, and I really appreciate it. And if people want to check out his YouTube, it's Hattie Kalakesh, and I have it displayed right now. And go check that out. And as always, Hattie, thank you. We'll, uh, we'll talk soon closer to the draft. We'll probably, you know, discuss, uh, you know, top 16 or something like that and uh, see what uh, we have on Doc for that. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right, Hattie, take it easy, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.